Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten here, bringing you a new Nancy Drew analysis video. Today's video is brought to you by the patrons over at Mystique Manor and by all the official fellow detective channel members. If you too would like to support the channel and gain access to exclusive features, check out patreon.com slash wizardkitten to become a patron or click join next to the subscribe button to become an official fellow detective. Today's video was suggested to me in the comment section a while back, and now is the time to bring it to life. I am not shy about saying that the Nancy Drew PC games are my favorite game series, and that they are unlike any other mystery video game series. Most other mystery games end up being hidden object adventures, which have their time and place, but are frankly not nearly as exciting to me as the Nancy Drew games, which involve much deeper storylines, atmospheres, and puzzles. Nancy is about more than simply finding something. We're actually truly uncovering clues and piecing them together on our own to solve a mystery. That's huge, and something that we don't find in so many other mystery video game series. And that's why my least favorite Nancy Drew games are still excellent video games in my opinion. Even the Nancy Drew games that I think are the worst still have something wonderful to offer to the video game space. So today, instead of just ragging on the games that I usually rag on, I'm going to share what I actually like about my least favorite Nancy Drew games. Because let's be real, all Nancy Drew games have positive points, all Nancy Drew games have something to love, and all Nancy Drew games are liked by some detectives and disliked by others. There's a ton of subjectivity, and today is all about letting down my preconceived opinions and letting some of my least favorite games shine. So. Let's get into it. First, The Silent Spy. There are actually a couple of games that I rank lower than The Silent Spy in my official ranking video, but I feel like I often criticize this one more vocally. I really hate the ending of this game, and I struggle with the conflicting storylines that both seem like they want to outdo one another. I wish the stakes actually felt higher and there were more in-game consequences for actions, and I would have completely rewritten the Revenant plot. But, on the positive side, the storyline about Nancy's mom is truly touching. I love that this game integrated flashbacks and brought us back to those times when little Nancy realized that her mother was leaving her. The depth and meaning behind those flashbacks teach us so much about Nancy's character, and they are really well done, with the foggy, fuzzy edges and the echoing sounds and voices. I also love that they happen when Nancy is traveling by train. It's so easy to imagine her falling asleep and dreaming of her mother. The end letter describing their relationship is absolutely beautiful and so moving. Additionally, I love Carson and Ned in this game. I really like that Carson freaks out because of course he would. I think his and Ned's reactions are very realistic given the situation, and I appreciate the skill of the voice acting. I love the Jammy Dodgers puzzle so stinking much because the cookies look absolutely delicious. The music is incredible. The mixture of traditional Scottish sounds with Kate's piano background is stunning and provides such a magical listening experience. Finally, I do enjoy that this game leans heavily into spy themes. I wish it did it more, in fact. So, do I have issues with The Silent Spy? Yes, absolutely. But can I see the positives? Yes, in fact, I see many. Next, Trail of the Twister. This game has some atrociously mind-numbing puzzles, two of which I count among the worst in the series. It severely underutilizes the excitement and danger of tornadoes, has multiple dull characters, and relies way too heavily on chores. But, on the positive side, 
I actually think that Pa and Scott have some really interesting backstories. I think it's fascinating how Pa talks about tornadoes after the death of his wife and how he's constantly dodging conversations related to Ma. That's a really interesting dynamic. And I love how jaded and bitter Scott is throughout the game. He feels so gritty and rude compared to so many other characters, and I appreciate the realism of adding in such a genuinely hateful person. You can also sometimes see some of his arguments, even if he is going about solving all of his problems in a super abrasive way. Additionally, I have an unhealthy amount of fun driving the car around like a maniac and purposefully or not crashing into other cars. I do also actually enjoy some of the puzzles, like the disaster kit shopping at Paws and creating the siren map for Scott. The prairie landscapes aren't too shabby either, and I love how the skies change at different times of day in different places so that Nancy can take different cloud pictures. This game does actually give us some real-world knowledge when it comes to cloud formations. Overall, this is definitely not a favorite of mine, and I have an awful lot of gripes. But are there some positive points? Absolutely. Next, Labyrinth of Lies. The theater sept concept is absurd and instills within me a feeling of deep rage. I think the culprit situation was a cop-out. I hate how meandering the dialogue can be at times. I think the museum is really weak in terms of actual educational value. The puzzles are deeply overwhelming at times, and I frankly would have rewritten the entire plot. But... On the positive side, the characters look insanely good. The graphics of this game are undeniably beautiful, and the costumes and character details are really impressive. Xenia even gets two full outfits, and both are stunning in both color and design. In fact, I love the whole color scheme of this game in general. Bright and warm on the surface, and cold and moody in the underworld, except the dashes of, you know, lava here and there. Additionally, I appreciate the backstories of the characters, most of which are actually quite good and add a unique level of depth to their personalities. I resonate a lot with Xenia's insecurities. I'm moved by Grigor's past. I'm fascinated and frankly wish I could learn more about Thanos' mob history and I love the poetic drama of Niobe's past mistakes. I'm also a big fan of the Grecian-inspired music with a little modern flair. The soundtrack matches the differing moods of the game really well and is quite pleasant to listen to. Finally, I do love that this game gives us an opportunity to learn more about Greek gods and goddesses, a fascinating subject to be sure. Do I have a long list of qualms to share when it comes to this game? Why, yes, I certainly do. But can I see all the positives that it has to offer? You betcha. Next, Creature of Kapu Cave. The idea of Kane Okala is severely underutilized. The game relies way too heavily on chore puzzles and meaningless tasks, the structure of the game makes the optional activities at Big Island Mike's completely worthless, the characters are abrasive and annoying, the Hardy Boys look ridiculous, exploration is disappointingly minimal, and the ending needs to be completely redone. But, on the positive side, I actually really like Malachi Craven's character and backstory. I think the storyline of relying on his genius and ego to become successful while simultaneously ruining all of his interpersonal relationships is fascinating. And it was subtly but successfully done. I love a good anger through line in a plot. I also love walking through the jungle because it's realistic that Nancy would need to tromp through the leaves often. And I especially love the creepy whispering sounds that Nancy sometimes hears when she's alone. Those whispers add so much ambiance and intrigue and were such a nice touch. Similarly, I think the music is fun 
and nicely captures Hawaiian vibes in order to support the location of the game. I do also think that the beach at Big Island Mike's is quite pretty, and the design of the jungle is quite nice as well. All in all, this game has a ton of issues, in my personal opinion. But I can still see the bright side. Next, Ransom of the Seven Ships. The kidnapping subplot feels like it has no sense of urgency or danger whatsoever. The music is discordant with the actual dangers of the story. The monkeys and their stupid little games make me seethe with rage. There is literally only one suspect and he has too many issues to mention. The game relies way too heavily on third-person view and the amount of puzzles becomes massively overwhelming. But, on the positive side, the pink sandy beaches are absolutely gorgeous. I love watching the leaves of the palm trees swaying gently in the wind and listening to the crashing waves on the beach. The tropical atmosphere is very successfully conveyed, and the game really excels at portraying an island life, surrounded by water with all sorts of island activities. I also really appreciate that this game is a true treasure hunt, complete with a complicated map left behind by a long dead pirate. The El Toro historical plotline is really interesting, and the puzzles that he created to protect the treasure are actually quite fun to unravel. My list of issues with this game? Long. But can I come up with positive things to say? Of course. Next, the Shattered Medallion. The plot is a complete and utter mess with no coherence or meaning, the puzzles are meaningless, the game show plotline has no relevance or importance whatsoever, the character dialogue is vague and vapid, the legacy of Sunny June was handled so incredibly poorly that it's actually depressing, the music does nothing to add to the story or location, and the culprit motivation and reveal is completely absurd. But, on the positive side, I do at least like the look of Sonny June. I think the visuals of his character were fun, even if I despised the execution of his personality and story. Additionally, I enjoy the overall idea of competing in puzzle challenges, and it's fun to try and sabotage other teams with point deduction cards while simultaneously trying to boost Nancy's own score. Finally, I do enjoy some of the dialogue with Patrick Dowsett. He's definitely the saving grace character of the game, hands down. So, while I have vastly more cons than pros for this one, I can at least still think of a couple things that I enjoy. Finally, Midnight in Salem. The plot is stupid and almost entirely removed player autonomy. The characters are shallow and have super weird motivations, the environments are laughably bad, empty and poorly designed, there is no historical or educational value, the scare factor is atrocious, the music is painfully repetitive, the game is riddled with grammar, spelling and audio recording errors, the character graphics are awful and they can't stop moving and it took four and a half years to make. But, on the positive side, though I'll be honest, this is getting quite hard at this point. This game is the most autumnal of any Nancy Drew game, and I love me some autumn vibes. I appreciate the beautiful auburn leaves on the trees, and I enjoy getting to carve jack-o'-lanterns and leave them all over town. I think the Johnny Cakes puzzle is actually kind of fun, and I don't mind the herb mixing puzzle at Luminous Infusions. I enjoy listening to some of the musical tracks outside of the game, and finally, I think the models for the Hardy Boys weren't actually too horrible. Pretty much everything else was horrible, and I think all those negatives vastly outweigh the positives, but do the positives exist? Yes, I can admit that. So there you have it, fellow detectives. A little appreciation video of my current least favorite Nancy Drew PC games. I think it's a testament to the brilliance of the series that even my least favorite games still have a number of redeeming qualities. 
They may not always be enough to raise the game's esteem, at least in my opinion, but there's no denying that they are there, and I think it's a fun way to acknowledge the differences in opinions that we as fellow detectives may have. I would be so curious to hear what you actually like about your least favorite Nancy Drew games. Were any of the games that I listed in this video some of your favorites? Do you think that your least favorite games have any redeeming qualities or not? What are your least favorite games and why do they land there in your ranking? Let a wizard kitten know in the comments section down below. If you would like to come join a fantastic group of fellow detectives at Mystique Manor as a patron for the channel, gain access to exclusive content, and support the making of more content like this, please check out patreon.com slash wizardkitten. I have also just launched channel memberships with exclusive badges and emojis to use during streams and in the comments section. If you'd like to support the channel by becoming an official fellow detective, click join next to the subscribe button. Please feel free to follow the channel on Instagram or Discord, linked in the description box down below. And as always, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more Nancy Drew and Sims 4 content. Thank you so much for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.